Welcome back to the KDPG Sunday edition. Our topic this morning is about politics and especially the 2020 election, which is coming up, even though we're in, only in 2019. And our guests this morning are Dave Majernik, the vice chairman of the Republican Committee of Allegheny County, and Mike Mickus, the uh, Pennsylvania Democratic strategist. And Sally Stapleton, of course, of the Post-Gazette, is here with us for this morning's discussion. Sally? So, Mike, uh, talking about the Biden effect, I just want to throw out, we've been talking about the negatives of Hillary Clinton, but she did, and did indeed win the pop popular vote. So, segueing to Biden, who has some of her similar name recognition and um, experience and how is that going to play out? Look, I think Joe Biden brings a lot of strengths to the table if he decides to run, but I think he also has challenges. You know, one of the challenges when you run for office, if you've held elective office for or been in the public eye for a very long time, there is a record for people to pick apart. And the Democratic Party has changed. You know, it's much different than when he joined the Senate in, in the 70s. Um, so some of the votes he cast in the past may be out of step with the current electorate. That said, you know, I think he can be a unifier for this country. And I think that's what our country needs. Um, whether it's him or whoever it is, it has to be somebody who's willing to bring people together regardless of party. But the, one of the problems he's going to have is he's, he's viewed by some as too old. Some people view him as out of step, too moderate for, you know, for some people's taste. Uh, but I think he will be a strong candidate. We'll see if he is strong enough to get through this crowded primary field. You led right into the mm. question I was going to bring up, and that is you've said that the Democrat, your words, the Democratic Party has changed since he was elected in the 70s and that he may seem out of step. Is there a possibility that the Democratic Party will be out of step with America? Because it seems, by a, by a lot of the candidates, they're veering quite a bit to the left. Yeah, I mean, I think right now the media seems to pay a lot more attention to those who are further on the left within the party. You know, there's there are candidates like Amy Klobuchar, John Hickenlooper, the former governor of, of Colorado, who are appealing to the center. You know, nobody knows who's going to win this race, but obviously there is a lot of energy on the left in the Democratic Party. And this happens all of the time within political parties when you have a presidential primary, a competitive one. We saw this in 2004 where Howard Dean took off. You know, nobody knows how it's going to unfold, but right now there is no doubt there is a lot of energy on the left. Within I would the argue Party. that in 2004, Howard Dean did take off, but then he he plummeted pretty quickly. Exactly. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, in 2016, took off and held steady against Hillary. And a lot of Democrats will say uh, the party kind of stacked the deck against him. Uh, well, I, I would disagree with anybody that says that the party stacked the deck. Uh, I mean, the debates were the debates. Well, with the uh, superdelegates, all this when we got Well, the, the superdelegates, I'm a big believer in superdelegates. The reason being, because when you run for delegate, you know, Joe Sixpack, can't beat a, a sitting member of Congress. And that's why the Democratic Party created the superdelegates. It definitely needed reform, but it also gave average people an opportunity to, to be a delegate. But the thing with, um, with uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, he's running again. And the biggest question mark is, you know, he was what I would consider a movement candidate. Mm -hmm. He had a movement. And, and, you know, you've seen throughout history, both on in, in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, movement candidates. But you've never seen a movement candidate who was able to successfully put that movement together for two consecutive elections. And so that's the big question mark with could, Bernie could, Sanders. Couldn't it be argued, though, because of the number of candidates who, who are... are maybe this is too strong of a word, but embracing a lot of the, what he had in 2016, that, that the movement's more than just a, a you know, Right, and he, where he's, he's, no longer, he's no longer the movement as, as a candidate. Part, you know, he's not the face of the movement. Because you're right, there have been candidates who've embraced Medicare for all and some of his other proposals. And as a result, I think in a lot of ways that will end up weakening him, him as a candidate. So here's the question I have for, the, for you uh, as far as the Democrats go. And Dave, you may disagree with, with my uh, analysis on this, but it is, you can, it's very difficult for a moderate Republican to make it through 
a statewide primary right now. Uh, you know the term, they're primary. Yep. I mean, because yep. <clears throat> the moderates, uh, regular party goers, don't always go and vote on a primary day. But those who are very enthusiastic about what they want to see happen do go to the polls. Are the Democrats facing the same danger now that, that some moderates who probably would be very good candidates and could probably go against Trump pretty well in the fall, in the fall of 2020 could be primaried out? It's always a possibility. You know, as you know, various wings of the party, whether it's the liberal wing, the centrist wing, gain strength. They do endanger, you know, those who do not hold those beliefs. But one of the most underreported things about this past election, 2018, were the pri Democratic primaries all across the country. There were some exceptions, but by and large, the those who affiliated with the Democratic Socialist groups or some of the far left groups were almost we were primarily defeated all across this country. There were some exceptions, like Alexandria or uh, Ocasio Ortez, Cortez in New York was one example. But by and large, the left wing of the party um, took a beating in Democratic primaries. Will that continue into this presidential primary? I don't know, but that, that is one thing you can look at this past, just less, less than a year ago, candidates from Texas to California to um, here in Pennsylvania, the, the, the more liberal candidates were almost always defeated in the primary. So um, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out at the presidential level. You two are, are basically working against each other for this upcoming special election. Give, give us the assessments of how this is going to go down. It's coming up April 2nd. There's a lot going on in this city right now. Are you worried about voter turnout? Are you feeling like your candidates are getting their message out? Talk, talk to us about that. I actually live in the district. Um, and uh, you know, the, I think Pam Iovino, the Democratic nominee, is an incredibly strong candidate, a Navy veteran um, who you know, worked under both Republican and Democratic administrations in Washington, um, and then came back here and, and has been very committed to helping veterans. Uh, her campaign is she's running a very strong campaign i live in the district they've actually knocked on my door twice already which is a uh i think a good sign turnout will be low by standards at, you know compared to like a november election uh but i think it'll be higher than what you normally see in a special election i i think pam ivino should win this race you never know i think raja is a flawed candidate he's run twice before and has lost by wide margins twice before uh he's you know, carries a lot of baggage, a lot of negatives with you know his business, whether it was suing people. So I, I would say it's very likely that Pam Ivino is going to win this election on November or April second. Um, but that's all going to be dependent on turnout. And from what I've seen of her campaign, they are working hard to turn out the Democratic base. All right, well, your rebuttal. I think that uh, Raja is an extremely strong candidate. He's, he's a business leader that's well respected. He even has a, a, ra a radio program on your uh, KDK radio that, uh, about leadership and business. And uh, and he's uh, sort of the Bill Gates or uh, Steve Jobs of the Pittsburgh area, creating a, a business from nothing. And and also he was a uh, a uh, immigrant who who came to this country and, and embraced our, 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 our um, way of life and, and, and has made something of himself. So I think he's an inspiration to, to everyone. And uh, as far as the past, he, he ran against uh, Rich Fitzgerald for a, a county executive, which is a task that nobody, uh, hardly any Republican except Jim Roddy ever accomplished. And, uh, and uh, so you can't really blame him for that. And then he lost uh, 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 the first time for the state Senate and with a negative campaign of, uh, that was basically based on falsehoods and, and uh, disparaging him for uh, you know, lawsuits and, and sending jobs overseas when he creates, created 500 jobs in the Pittsburgh area and, and, and is a loyal Pittsburgher. All right, we, we, we got that one. We got <laughs> that, that debate settled, or we'll find out on April the 2nd. Um, we only have a, 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 about a two minutes left here in the program. The one thing we keep hearing over and over and over again from a lot of people is that the, it, the part, it's just too divisive right now. 
that there is no middle ground. Uh, Americans say that they're fed up with, with, with uh, you know, the bickering and that nothing can seem to be get, get done. Um, are we in a polarized situation for a long period of time, do you think? Unfortunately, I think we, we are. Um, you know, a lot of it will depend on who the Democrats put forth. You know, will they put somebody who is looking for the country? Or will they, you know, are we just going to continue the partisan warfare? And look, both parties are to blame. Uh, the Republican Party, in my opinion, has been a, a, a they punish their elected officials for compromise a lot more than Democrats are punished in elections. And so what we've seen is that we can't govern. You know, you see it here at the state level where the legislature can't pass budgets on time. You see it at the federal level. You know, the last, who knows when the last time a, a federal budget was passed uh, by September 30th, which is required under a law. Um, unfortunately, it is on both sides. A and at some point, the elections need to end. The election ends on November, you know, the first Tuesday right. in November. And in, in, unless both parties start to realize that it ends and you need to actually govern, you know, we're, we're going to face this for a long time. We have about 30 seconds yeah. or so. Well, I, I agree that uh, I'm glad you said that about elections end because it seems like the Democrat Party doesn't want to believe that Donald Trump won and they don't want to cooperate with him and, and so forth. So, uh, so I agree that once the election comes to an end, let's move forward and try to work together. And, uh, and I, I think that the media sometimes plays a part in it because they, 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 they look for the negatives and uh, things that, are, that draw attention. All right. One thing to remember, but, he did run. All right. he, he, I've got to cut, some, uh, cut you off, Mike and Dave. Thanks so much for being with us this morning <laughs> on the KDPG Sunday edition. Sally and I will be back in just a moment.